I'm going to talk about about democracy. Well, you know, since we're we're on the the light, fluffy subject, we're going to talk about the the dream versus the reality, right? Um, I, I, the the fact is, we've never actually had a democracy, uh, and I don't think a democracy is a good idea. the The dream of democracy, of course, is that every everyone gets a say, um, and on on a small level, like you know, if if I'm hanging out with two of my friends and we go, I want to go to the movies, I want to go for dinner, and the third person goes, well, let's vote on it. That's democracy. Um, and and if we end up going to dinner instead of movies and I get upset about it, that's also democracy. Sorry about your luck. Tyranny of the majority. Um, but the reality of, of what we see is, is not remotely democratic, whether that's because we're looking at things like in the States, the Electoral College, or in Canada, um, the, the just the fact that... that um, we don't have representation by population or our percentage of the popular vote. Um, and even if we did, it's still, it's still a thing. Why not both? Oh, don't come at me with your logic and reason, kitty jerk face. There's no place for logic in my channel. Dinner and a movie? <laughs> That's just crazy talk. No one does that. Um, anyways, yeah, democracy is, you know, it's, it's a good theory and it's a, a thing to strive towards, but we're not, we're not there. We're just not there. Um, but it's surreal to me how many people really, 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 really talk about the importance of democracy and, and how it is incredibly a powerful and wonderful and glorious institution that, that every single thing we have to do to protect democracy, we have to protect democracy. And those same people are the ones that are passing these bills that are like, hey, if, if it's, you know, a, a poor neighborhood, maybe we make it not not impossible to vote, but just a little harder because they tend to vote against us or gerrymandering or any number of, of these things which are specifically designed to get around the whole democracy debate. Um, you know, the, the latest one is this fucking J.D. Vance person. Uh, we're going to we're going to see Tucker Carlson uh, doing an interview. So, like, brace yourself. I, I don't want to just push the button and suddenly Tucker Carlson's face is there. I just want you to like, take a moment, take a breath. It's going to be all right. Okay. Now I can push the button. All right. So here's Tuck, old Tuck. So there are two kinds of people who run for office and one category is really big. One category is really small. The big category is people who just want to get to office because they want to prove something to their absent or alcoholic fathers or fill some empty space inside or have power over you. That's almost everybody. Then there's a small category of people who run for office because they really believe something and they've got something to say. They Those are the people Tucker hates most. Really mean it. You almost never see these people. One of them is J.D. Vance. He didn't oh, mean to run oh. for office, but he is. He's running for senator. He didn't mean to run for office. He's walking down the street. He sees like there's a someone dropped a $5 bill. He bent over to pick it up and suddenly he was running for fucking office. The poor man. But, you know, he did it anyways. He, he stuck to his guns. He gunned to his stucks. In Ohio, and since the second he announced, places like the Daily Beast and the Washington Post and the Atlantic... The liberal media. Atlantic, the axis of protectors of the ruling class, have gone crazy. They hate him. They really hate him. And that's how you know he means it. Well, the latest example came on Friday in Alexandria. J.D. Vance made a pretty obvious... Wait, 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 Tucker. They hate him, and that's how you know he means it. Um, no. A lot of people are hated for, for things that they don't mean. Um, that's, that's a thing in the world that exists, so I'm not sure I'm following you on that one. Uh, I'm glad that doesn't happen to me when I'm walking down the street, haha, <laughs> right? You know, I, the last thing I need is to accidentally be a Democratic uh, candidate in an election. If the left gets to run for office the same way we regular people do, we can't tolerate this in our economy. Right? Right? Fucking left. Hate the way they're always lefting around all comradefully. Ugh. At this point, he said, the childless left, that's how you put it, lacks, quote, physical commitment to the future of this country. Quote, why is this just a normal fact of life for the leaders of our country to be people who don't have a personal and direct stake in it via their own offspring? Okay. Um, so that's that's the take that, that sort of J.D. Vance thought he would make. Um, basically, if you don't have children, you fucking monster, 
um, why with, without having that vested interest in the future, why should you be allowed to like have a voice? So that's an interesting example of how democracy may not be available for everybody if, if these, these uh, people who, who are standing democracy so hard actually got their way. Um, it turns out I have many children. Um, that doesn't mean I have any more or less vested interest in the benefit and glory of, of making the country a wonderful place than anyone else. However, certain people don't have children, like Alexandria Urquizio Cortez, or like gays. And so, you know, why should they, why should they be allowed to vote? I'm just, just like, I'm just asking questions, right, guy? People who don't have children, hmm, could this perhaps be a dog whistle against non-binary? Non-binary, um, gay people, ugly people, um, people who, who lack the social graces, you know, like there's a, about a billion different ways that you can wind up uh, not having children. Um, also, the decision to not have children. And it may not be, I don't want to have children solely because I want to be a voiceless uh, cog in the machine and I want the machine to run without any of my input. That might be a thing. Yeah, people with fertility issues. Uh, once upon a time, I was told I'd never have kids because my ex-wife and I were incompatible to do so. And then we had four. So, <laughs> lol. Um, rich conservatives have convinced poor leftists that nepotism is evil, but rich people do it all the time. Oh, yeah. Rich people, like, th that's their bread and butter. Um, you know, between that and, like, you know, destroying everything in their path. That's what he asked, and they went completely bananas. Which is so we weird. We to talk to J.D. Vance about what he meant and what it's like to be attacked for saying things that are so obvious. The left ramps up its attack on J.D. Vance. Okay. Obviously true. He joins us tonight. J.D. Vance, thanks so much for coming on. So, uh, okay, I know it's not fair to judge someone by their appearance alone, but like this, this man um, in this exact form uh, only existed in 1980s uh, Canada. Um, this is this is my this is my dad when I was in junior high school. He has my dad's beard. He has my dad's haircut. He has my dad's bushy eyebrows. He has my dad's poor choice in clothing. Um, this this looks a lot my dad. Fortunately for me, does not sound like my dad because my dad was a lot more human. Um, what? Tell us what. That was just a very short snippet of a much longer speech that, and really interesting speech that people I think should read. But what were you saying? Thanks, Tucker. And by the way, if folks want to help us out, jdvance.com. Every little bit helps. Griff, 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 griff. Thank you, Tucker. Griff, griff, griff. Uh, I wanted kids. Uh, it couldn't happen, so now Tucker thinks I shouldn't have a vote. He's a moron. I am still a citizen. I have kids in my family. Aside from that, I'm still a human, a living human being who will be living for a long time yet. I hope. Yeah. It turns out that that having like a, a progeny that. And what about people who like if you have kids but they die? Um, you know, maybe maybe dying of of like some legitimate. You know, the kid had cancer or something. Did you just lose your voice in in elected uh, elected officials' uh, selection? Like, is that is that really what the thing that we should be doing? Like, I feel pretty strongly that this is this is an asshole making an off the cuff remark and also being like, Psh, uh, I don't know, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ride this as hard as I can. I'm getting on Tucker, so. I'm glad we're getting this this level of, of quality from our, our potentially elected candidates. So if you can throw us a couple bucks. But look, what I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how... So Let's just look at, so, what kinds of things do they all have in common? Well, let's see. Let's, let's go through the list of the examples he provided, um, our oligarchs of the Democrats. So, Pete Buttigieg. Um, well, he's a white male. I see nothing further to see here. Uh, Kamala Harris. Well, what, what really does Kamala Harris know about, like, 
you know, running a country or, or having a vested interest in the world around. She doesn't have children, and she's not even a white uh, AOC. I read on the internet that she won't even let Ben Shapiro smell her feet. So, like, is that really who you want in charge of the free world? I don't think so. I don't think so, man. This literally was just him picking up the top three popular people who represent different minorities and being like, should we allow the minorities to vote? Not in my ethno state. God damn it. How does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I just wanted to ask that question and propose that maybe if we want a healthy ruling class in this country, we should invest more, we should vote more, we should support more people who actually have kids, because those are the people who ultimately have a more direct stake in the future of this country. <laughs> okay. Um, if you've ever been to a Walmart or back in my youth, a Rogers video on a Saturday, um, you know that possession of a child does not make you a good person. Having, having created life does not imply some kind of wisdom or ability or even a vested interest in the country or that life you created. So that's neat. I'm not going to continue with this because it ain't going to get better. This is literally some schmuck trying to be uh, conservo edgy and and failing miserably and then it, when it gets blown up in his face instead of what should happen what should happen in a really real big people's world is that this guy should be like wow I said a dumb thing oh there goes my chances instead what we get is Tucker Carlson going let me get you on a big national platform we'll get you in there we'll we'll we'll, we'll do it we'll pu we'll put together some some uh, pack money for you and it's just it's fucking silly and empty and devoid and worthless and exactly what's wrong with the world. Um, how much did he pay Tucker to appear on the show? I don't think he paid Tucker. I think because of the nature of 24-hour news uh, streaming, we're constantly looking for anything that we can put on the air. And so any dumb schlub shows up, makes a dumb statement in a race for Ohio Senate where he's probably... Like, this, this guy is probably the Kevin J. Johnson of Ohio, right? He's not going to win. He's not even remotely on the ticket. But then Tucker sees someone said a dumb thing and goes, I can I can piss off the libs by, by giving this guy a voice. And he does, and it happens. And then all of a sudden, here we are watching it on my stream going, why is the world so fucking stupid? First off, I want to say thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Thank you to my patrons that support me on Patreon. Um, I am a little streamer, and these people are all really awesome for supporting me. Thank you to I Am Canadian. Special, special huge thanks go to my one prophet, Shithead Dave Anderson. And of course, my final tier of supporters is The Gods. This tier is the most expensive and likely to never have any members, but Patreon really told me I should have one, so it's true, I guess. There are no gods. I try to put up stuff at least once a week, and I live stream every Saturday at noon uh, Mountain Time on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, like an old man. Again, thanks for watching, and have a kick-ass day.